Hey, it's Tim. And it's Amy from Go With Less. Today's video finds us in New York City. We're here on a cat sit, and this video is gonna be a different one from our other travel videos. In this video, we are visiting 10 food halls in the New York City area. Yeah, if you don't know what a food hall is, remember the food courts when you were a kid that had a Chick-fil-A and a, a hot dog stand or whatever? So this is sort of like that on an elevated level. So if you know what a food truck is, like the food trucks that park on the street and serve this magnificent food, served out of this small kitchen. So it's sort of like a food truck meets the food courts that we were used to when we were kids. So an amazing experience. The ones that we visit tend to be very international and very affordable. So we visit them instead of going and sitting down at a more expensive restaurants. We don't want to compromise great food because we're on a budget. So this is the way that we can get great food and stick with our budget is food halls. So we visited 10 of them. There were two criteria that we picked when choosing our agenda. Number one, the food hall had to have at least 10 different businesses and I found that by the websites. Why is that? If it only has five, maybe one is out of business. Maybe one is closed for the day. Three is lame. So we didn't want to go out of our way for lame. So we did something that had at least 10 so we had a lot of variety and options. Number two, it couldn't be like sole cuisine. So there are places that are just Korean food. In Flushing, Queens, there are many that are just Asian food. That's still too narrow. We like having the entire gamut of the world, so we follow those two rules when picking our stops. So I hope that you'll stay tuned today. If travel, if budget travel, if travel hacking, if house sitting, if any of these are things that you're interested in, please subscribe to our channel over here because we talk about them every single Wednesday. Please stay tuned for our tour of food halls in New York. Okay, stop number one is Industry City Food Hall in Brooklyn. It's an outlier in terms of distance, so we did it first. Turns out we got here when everything was closed. It's probably a lunch place. We got here at seven on the dot, everything is shut down, and we are heading out of here hungry. Our last trip to New York was in May of 2017. And this building where we're in right now was just getting ready to open, but it wasn't open yet. So it looked like it was gonna be cool. Here it is, and it is super cool. We're talking about the Decal Market Hall in Brooklyn. And it has everything. It has arepas, it has empanadas, it has Saigon street food, it has, what do we have here? Vietnamese food, it has Korean food, it has steamed buns, it has Italian sandwiches that look like very authentic, it has Katz's Deli, it has barbecue, it has a French bakery, it has a lot. And so this is a definite must visit in Brooklyn. It is open for dinner, so that's kind of cool. And I see all over the place, they have like these $10 lunch specials if you come at lunchtime. I'm guessing maybe Monday through Friday, but just a heads up, you might get a good deal on a lunch here. I don't know that we're gonna be back for lunch because we have a lot of food halls to visit and I don't know that we're repeating anything. years ago we took a food tour of the Lower East Side and one of the stops was Katz's Deli. I was a vegetarian back then so I just looked at the pastrami and I didn't eat it and I have been thinking about it ever since. Well I have been an omnivore for almost four years and we haven't been back to Katz's Deli since. So we are waiting for a big pastrami sandwich and if you don't know Katz's Deli it's the big scene in When Harry Met Sally. This is their only other place outside of their main location in the Lower East Side but we're in the DeKalb Market Hall in Brooklyn for dinner. So we're going to be sharing this sandwich. I can't wait to show it to you. It's going to be gigante. And amazing. All right, we're starting with pickles. Two kinds. That's a good pickle. All right, pickle number two. Briny, delicious. This is how you want a pickle. We are sharing one big sandwich. The sandwich was about 25 bucks and it had two pickles, like two different kinds of pickles, so that's really nice. So I'm gonna try my first pastrami at Katz's for like, I don't know, over 10 years. Wow. I put some mustard on it, it has a nice rye. 
First of all, the bread is fresh. Mmm. There's something about a good pastrami and like the cure and the saltiness. This is super delicious. This is worth $25 for a sandwich. This is a worth it splurge. So Grand Central Station is probably going to be on a lot of people's radar if you're coming to New York City. It's something to see. You definitely need to come to Grand Central Station. There is a food hall that's here in the facility. It's okay. So we had breakfast here and uh, there's lots of interesting restaurants that are in the space. This isn't your normal mall food court. However, I certainly wouldn't go out of my way to come here to this food, food hall. But something to go to if you happen to be here at Grand Central Station. So here we are for breakfast at the Grand Central Station Food Hall in the basement of Grand Central, the most glorious building. And it turns out that food halls are actually kind of tricky for breakfast. There's a ton of lunch and dinner food, not so much for breakfast. So we did find a place that serves like steak during the day, but they do have like an egg and cheese on a muffin, nothing special at all. However, this is what breakfast at a food hall looks like. We are waiting for our lunch at Turnstile. This is a kind of a cool food hall. It's in a subway station, which doesn't sound so great, but we've been here before back in May of 2017 and we loved it. So we made sure that we got back here for a stop on this trip. We are having an arepa from the Arepa factory and we're gonna show that because we're just waiting for it to come out. So we're gonna show it in just a second, but they don't have a ton of different stalls here, but what they have is very high quality. So we are excited to be here and hopefully gonna have another great experience. So this is an arepa that we had the last time we were in New York when we came to Turnstile. It is a, it has shredded beef, black beans, it has a plantain and some amazing cheese. The last time we had this, this was I think a, the, our favorite thing we had the whole time we were in New York potentially. Here it goes, let's see what it tastes like. Oh, holy smokes. It's as delicious as we remember. Mm. That is good. So what I have learned is that I want more plantains in my food. The plantains made that pavillon arepa so yummy and phenomenal and sweet and warm, just great. So more plantains, please. We are leaving Turnstile a little bit hungry. We haven't been satisfied for lunch, so we have more food halls to hit though. Okay, we weren't quite satisfied, so we went to this place called Chicken Cone. So it is a waffle cone with fried chicken in it. We got ours with a tangy mustard sauce. No forks, this is our utensil. Let's try this out. Wow, okay. I like this better than the pavillon, which is saying quite a bit. I can't wait to try it with the waffle cone, but this is like unbelievably delicious fried chicken tenders, which if it's done really well is delicious. And this is fried perfectly with the mustard sauce is great. It's nice and hot, fresh. I'm loving this. I don't want to share it with Tim. This is divine. This is delicious. Um, I'm gonna have to come up with new words, but mm, mm, mm. good chicken. <laughs> mm. So this place was called Chick and Cone, and so the fried chicken actually came in this waffle cone. I don't know that the two together necessarily made it like chicken and waffles, like you would think of chicken and waffles. However, on its own, it's pretty delicious. So overall, this was a huge win. Here's to. Uh, Chick and cone. We're at Gansevoort Market in Chelsea. This looks amazing. There are more than 10 stands here. We wish we could have a meal here, but unfortunately we're too full, so but it looks very cool here.
We're still here at Gansevoort Market. We couldn't pass up this warm chocolate chip cookie at this place called The Big Chip. Is that what it's called, Amy? Just the chip. Just the chip. chip. I think it's just chip. Okay, well, is that the chip? Look at it. It's gooey. It's Hold on, it let me looks see the gooey. Amazing. Warm. Mm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. I think I need to go get a milk. You do need milk. So this is the last bite of this cookie we had. This was a worth it splurge. It was $3.50 for this one cookie, but man was it good. Ooey gooey, sticks to the roof of your mouth. Delicious. We're at the North 3rd Street Market here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. So we walked 3.1 miles to get here per Google Maps. And so we're waiting for a Lao dish. We've never had Lao food before, so very interested to see what this is gonna be like. It's a rice-based dish, so I bet it's gonna be good. We're here at one o'clock on a Friday and the market seems a little dead, so there aren't a lot of people here. So that's unusual for most of the food halls that we visited. So we just got our Lao food. Looks a little strange, so we're gonna see what we think of the food. So it looks a little funky, and it also smells a little funky. So I'm going in first, and I'm gonna be brave. So, let's see. Hmm. We waited for 10 minutes to have it cooked, and it's, the rice is lukewarm. We, I don't know if it's meat, but it's cold. Like, I think it's supposed to be cold. It's extremely salty. It has these crunchies in it, which are kind of nice. Um, this is definitely a different flavor that I'm not used to. I don't know what I expected. This wasn't it. Food halls are wonderful because you can try all kinds of new things. This cost, how much was this, Tim? 12 bucks. $12. So you're gonna have a very different experience for $12. If it isn't something for you, at least you got to try something new for $12. How often can you say that? So. We're gonna get to letting Tim try this now and see what he thinks. All right, it's my turn. I like it. I actually like it quite a bit. It's just, it's different. So like Amy said, the, the meat's cold and the rice is a little lukewarm. It has these nice crunchy like, oniony fried onions, I believe in there. There's coconut. It's actually quite nice, but um, I don't know that I come out of my way to get this, but it's definitely different. <laughs> There's also some spice in there. halls aren't created equally. I had read that the Williamsburg Whole Foods Market had a killer food hall of outside vendors and we went. We have no problem with Whole Foods but it isn't something that we're gonna call a traditional food hall. We are not gonna put it on our list. So we went in, planned to eat a little bite at a food hall kind of market and we didn't see that so off we go to the next stop. <laughs> We're at Urban Space 570 at the corner of 51st Street and Lexington Avenue in Manhattan. There are two spots, urban spaces. One is on Vanderbilt, we're gonna check that out next. And we are kind of slowing down a little bit. We haven't even eaten that much today. So we just got an empanada, a corn empanada with some cojita cheese, I think it is. Cojita cheese, I don't know how to say it. Um, but there looks to be some corn and cheese and jalapeno. And we love a good empanada. So let's get this going. Oh, that's surprisingly good. It's really warm. We just had it under the heat lamp, so I wasn't expecting much, but nice and gooey cheese, and the corn is very sweet. We are at Urban Space Vanderbilt, a cousin to the place we just visited, which was Urban Space 570. So here's Urban Space Vanderbilt. We're here in the middle of the afternoon on a Friday, and it's pretty lively. There are a whole bunch of 
really good looking stalls, but we aren't hungry for savory food. We're going to have a little detour and get some dessert. So I have a huge sweet tooth. Tim really doesn't, and he picked our dessert, so I don't know how I feel about that. But it is a donut from Dough, and it's a cheesecake donut. So while Tim is not a big dessert person, he is a big cheesecake person. So let's see how we like our donut that we're sharing. It's huge. Wow, that's a big giant donut. I don't need savory food anymore. Oh man. How much was this, Tim? $375. $375. This is a good deal for $375. Obviously, it's enough to feed two people. This is a big one. So there's, I guess, graham cracker crumbs on top with like a cheesecake layer on top, on top of like a yeasty, yummy donut. So this is a keeper. If Tim doesn't stop recording soon, I'm gonna eat his. I love me some cheesecake. This is a donut whoop, combined with cheesecake. How amazing is that? And it is delicious. I've already had a bite. Or two. Or two. Oh, mm. Donut. No more donut. I want another one. We're at Nung Pong in the Chelsea Market for our five spice pork belly sandwich with cilantro and carrots and cucumber. We have been waiting for this for about a year and a half. I got a bite that's totally fat, which is good, but it is totally fat. So I'm excited to get some meat in here, but every bite on this sandwich is totally different. You think so? <laughs> so we're still in Chelsea Market and we found this great looking Asian noodle place where they're actually making homemade noodles at the shop. So we're going to try this out. It looks like it's going to be delicious. It's a beef brothy soup. There you go. It's a beef <laughs> brothy soup if you didn't hear Amy there in the background. <laughs> Okay, this soup is fantastic. Uh, it is kind of chilly out, it's wintry. The beef is so tender. Mm. The noodles, there's something about a fresh noodle. It doesn't taste the same as noodles out of a package at all. This is, oh my goodness, look at this giant hunk of beef. Mm. Tim and I are gonna have to like fight for that. <laughs> <I'll win. laughs> this is good stuff. This is a place that has a really long line. So we had a feeling it would be good and it is. So we're having lunch here at Mighty Quinn. So we got a brisket sandwich with some selected sauce. We also got burnt in baked beans and mac and cheese. I'm gonna give the mac and cheese a try here. And we're at Hudson Eats downtown in the financial district. Wow. So it's hard to mess up mac and cheese, but this is over the top good mac and cheese. It's got little crunchies in it. I'm not sure if it's onions or bacon bits or what, but it is delicious and uber cheesy. So here's a bite of the brisket. So it's a sandwich that we got, but we're, I'm just going to try this by itself. That is good brisket. Nice and moist. They added a little bit of salt, which actually adds something nice to it, and the sauce is also good. It's a good piece of brisket. Okay, so we shared that brisket sandwich, and it's on like a giant King's Hawaiian roll, which I think King's Hawaiian rolls make everything so good, but it's a really fresh, yummy roll. Maybe it's not King's, I don't know, but it's a delicious, sweet roll. The brisket isn't that warm, but everything else about it is really good. And the barbecue sauce is thin, it's all over my fingers, so I'm gonna be sticky for the day. But that extra salt that Tim mentioned really does make it. So this is a delicious brisket sandwich. I don't think I was expecting it to be this good, and it's really messy. Mm. I think we're debating getting another one.
here we are at food hall number 10. We got to number 10. It's the Plaza Food Hall underneath the Plaza Hotel at 59th and 5th in Manhattan. This is a really swanky one. The trouble is it's extremely hard to find seating here. We got here early and we were lucky to find two small tables. We have another couple joining us today. So we are getting started with a lobster roll. It's kind of expensive. With the tip it was $19.50 for something in the size of a hot dog bun. But even though we are budget travelers, I still love me some lobster. Okay, we got a tartine from the tartinery. We love a good tartine. This one has a creamy burrata spread on it with some roasted tomatoes, some fresh thyme. It's just okay. It needs a little something. It needs a little fresh pepper, maybe some olive oil, maybe a little, I don't know, a little lemon zest or something like that. It's good, but it can be better. We're still here at the Plaza Food Hall. We had a, we got some donuts at the Donuttery. And so, what is this, Amy? It's a cinnamon sugar fresh donut. It's a cinnamon sugar fresh donut from the Donuttery, so we'll see warm. here. Warm. Is it going to be warm? And crunchy. That's good, yeah. A plus. Stop. <laughs> Holy cow, we ate like kings in New York City and we didn't spend that much money doing it. Isn't that incredible? Do you have food halls that you've tried that you like that you can recommend us to because we visit them all over the place? That's our comment down below today. So please tell us your experience with food halls. Do you have good ones? Is this something you've never heard of? Put it down below, we'd love to hear that. We really had some amazing, affordable, delicious food during this visit, so I apologize for not having a better vocabulary. So I'm working on words to describe things in general, but food specifically. So I love all food, but it really was amazing, it really was delicious, and it really was affordable. So, um, however, I, again, my apologies for not, uh, <laughs> I, I gotta work on that, but uh, thank you so much for watching. Yeah, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe down here because we're trying to get to a big number by the end of December. We're trying to hit a thousand and we need your help to do it. Uh, again, the comment down below is tell us your experience with the food hall. Ask any questions that you might have. Again, I'm from New York, so if you have any New York City questions, I'm happy to answer those too. This Just the fact that it's about food halls doesn't mean that you can only ask food hall questions. Ask any New York City questions. I'm a New Yorker. Uh, and then share this with your social media. So if you know anybody who's visiting New York City, if you know anybody who should know about food halls around the world if you know anyone who lives in New York City there's a lot of New Yorkers who won't know anything about these uh, places so please do share this on your social media and we'll be back next Wednesday with a new video thanks for watching